Now let's look at some theory. Our goal here really is to create uh, instructional material that gets into the long-term memory of our learners and eventually is available for later use or performance in the real world. And of the four learning theories that exist, I think these fall best into the one of cognitivism. And cognitive scientists focus on human information processing, namely memory and thinking, to design their instruction instructional materials. And there are three main concepts that we're going to focus on. This is dual channels, that is people have separate information processing channels for visual materials and for verbal materials. Limited capacity, that is people can pay attention only to a few pieces of information in each channel at a time. And active processing, that is people understand presented material when they pay attention to it, when they uh, organize it into a mental model, and when they integrate it with, with stuff the other stuff they already know and so let's look at this cognitive model and this is how Richard Mayer depicts it with this here and let's let's uh, walk through this and so the world presents us with an infinite amount of data at any given moment and our long-term memory has an expansive capacity for storage the bottleneck here however is getting it through the short-term memory so data comes to us through the world, from the world, through our senses, our eyes and our ears. And our sensor memory can hold information for just a few seconds. We select which information we want to pay attention to and bring that into our working memory where we can hold on to it a little bit longer. There, we make sense of that by organizing it into models, a verbal model or a visual model. And finally, we're going to integrate those two models together along with stuff that we already know, our prior knowledge, and use that to encode new knowledge in the form of long-term memory. Now let's look at those three, uh, th three aspects we looked, talked about before. So the dual channel theory. Now in most instruction, we don't utilize all of our senses, but we focus mostly on visual and auditory. And all of our information is going to flow through those two channels, the visual and the verbal channel, throughout the processing of the information. And it's going to stay in that channel all the way up until the end. We see pictures, and we read the words on their slides, and it goes all the way through the visual channel. And we hear the words that they tell us, and that goes through our verbal channel. And it's not until the end that we integrate the two, along with prior information, into new knowledge. Now, both channels feed into working memory, which has a limited capacity. And this is what George Miller refers to in his 1956 article, The Magic Number 7, Plus or Minus 2, in which he demonstrated that people can hold only about seven pieces of information in short-term memory at one time. The truth is it's actually probably closer to four. Now, this limited capacity is why we cannot perform the multiplication of, of big numbers in our head, like 896 times 793 because we simply don't have the capacity to hold all the interim products and do the calculations in our head. Active processing is really three different uh, cognitive processes. So the working memory, in addition to storing information, has to do these things. Uh, it's responsible for selecting which sensory information we want to pay attention to, making sense of that information, by organizing it into models, and finally integrating it with stuff that we knew from before. All of this processing, plus those things that we had to remember, are all called together cognitive load. So now let's talk about how these multimedia principles help uh, with learning. So during instructional design, we can assist learners in each one of these three areas. So we have two channels, so we should use both channels in learning. This is where the multimedia and modality principles uh, come into play. So use pictures and words. We can also decrease cognitive load so we don't overtax the working memory and its limited capacity by limiting, limiting the amount of information that we put into the working memory. So don't read your slides. Uh, let students control the pace. Speak naturally so they don't have to translate formal speech into something they can understand. And avoid extraneous clip art. So we, we uh, don't put extra stuff into our working memory. And finally, we can also decrease cognitive load by making the processing activities easier. So by eliminating extraneous information and familiar familiarizing people with the important concepts ahead of time, we help them select what is important. 
By highlighting the key terms, we can help students organize material. Also, by keeping things that go together next to each other, we help with the organization. And finally, by presenting verbal and visual material together in a deliberate way, we can help with integration.